Hello, welcome back to this series on Strands Agents. In the previous videos, which you'll find linked in the description below, we've been introduced to how to get started, and we've also taken a deep dive into tools. In this video, we're going to take a look at MCP, that's Model Context Protocol. It's all the rage. It's how people are building agentic systems today. Now, if you're not familiar with MCP, there is a link in the description below to a video that I put together which introduces the concept. But in this video, it's all about strands, strands agents. Suman, how can we get strands agents talking to MCP? Absolutely. So this is just one line of code. All we have to do is we just need to have to import MCP client from strands tool.mcp. And once we have that, we can create the MCP client object. So here, if you see this, we are setting the studio server parameters and mentioning the main.py file. Gotcha. So this looks a lot like the configuration that I'd pass into Claude Desktop or into QCLI so that it can use my MCP tools that are installed with exactly. standard I.O. on my machine. Right. So let's go into this main.py file. So as you rightly mentioned, this is running locally. So all this MCP server does is share one tool called Dice roll. Really all it does. <laughs> Rolling dice. I love this. So it's not a weather tool. It's not a time tool. We're doing something a bit different here. So this is rolling a dice, and I guess you can choose the number of sides it's got. Yes, that's correct. So this is the function which will be available from this uh, MCP server sure. for the client. And so this is written in fast, uh, fast MCP. That's correct. This is MCP, sort of separate from strands. Now, how do we connect to it from strands? Right. So all we have to do is now that we have the MCP client, while we define the agent, we just have mentioned the tools. And this time, if you remember previously, we had used the default tools and the custom tools. Yep. But now our tools are nothing but the MCP server, what the tools that it is uh, sharing with us. So when we run MCP, and so anybody who's familiar with this, the MCP uh, client will call list mm -hmm. tools, go grab the tools, and then configure itself to use them. And I guess that's what this line of code is doing right here, list tools. That's so correct. So this is what uh, we are doing here, where we are calling this uh, MCP client and asking what are the tools that it can offer us. Gotcha. And that tools we are passing is to the agent. And one more thing, because this did trip me up before. Mm -hmm. So tools, as the agent sees it, is a list of tools. Uh, so right. that's why we had the square brackets and we listed all the tools out. And the list tools sync returns a list. So we just that's have to good. give it that list directly. Absolutely. And after that, we just have uh, some uh, boilerplates. And this is just to give us and chat interface so that we don't have to run this code every time. Excellent. Because in the previous examples, we just sent one prompt into the agent. Let's have a conversation with our dice rolling agent. I'm excited for this. Me too. We're going to have, you can be the games master here. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe we can roll a D20 or something. Sure. Do you know what a D20 is? I do. Uh, because I told you five minutes ago. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, let's have a look. Let's roll a D20. Okay, so this is a 20-sided dice. And so essentially using this tool, essentially is going to do a random number. Um, a 15, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. You've probably uh, been successful, I would say, in that roll. What are you doing now? A D6, okay. Excellent. And what do we get here? You rolled a three. Okay, maybe you're pushing your luck a little bit. I just want to try one thing. Okay. Just roll. Okay, let's see what happens here. So you're not giving it a specific number. Yeah. And it says, I, well, it says it needs to know how. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> so maybe just give it one number and say six. Okay, is that what you did? Yeah, six. And there you go. Yeah. Okay, so this is the agentic flow. This is using your MCP tool mm -hmm. locally. Yes, that's it's using locally. and. If you see this here, I have not mentioned the model, so it is using the default model, which which is Claude three point seven. Gotcha. Okay. But the tool is running, and um, the MCP server is running locally on my laptop. So this MCP server is using standard I/O, which is one of the transports that's available through the MCP 
protocol, P stands for protocol, never mind, through MCP. Um, but there are there is another transport available as well. And so this is very much designed to help us decouple our systems even further and have our servers hosted on the web somewhere or hosted in the cloud. And so this protocol, this tran uh, transport rather, is streamable HTTP. So this gives us the opportunity to have our tool cloud hosted. And so I've actually done exactly that in my AWS account. So I've actually created a Lambda function, and inside of that Lambda function, I have an MCP server, a tool server, and that's backed by, an, or we have a API gateway in front of that Lambda function so that anybody can come and use this tool. Prior to this recording, I sent you that URL yes. so that you could maybe configure that with Strands Agents. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that URL. You're very welcome. <laughs> So all we have to do now is, if you remember, previously we used the Studio client and we are running it locally. And now we are using the streamable HTTP. So the only thing that changes here is now we are giving the endpoint or the URL which you shared with me. Yep. Unlike previously, where we had to run it locally on, our, uh, on my system. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the URL there for the uh, API gateway. That's a very good point. Excellent. Okay. Um, and that's it. That's all you need to do. That's all. Okay. You don't have to change anything uh, in the remaining part of the code. Okay. Pro prove that it works. Um, it would be probably a fairly boring demo because it'll do exactly the same thing as the last one did. But I guess what it's doing now is it's actually reaching out to the, uh, to the server there. I noticed a small uh, warning there that we're having through the code. I think that might be a bug in something I've done. I will check that out. But... But it still works. Yeah, excellent. D20, what do we roll this time? A five. We definitely are pushing our luck. Let's hope we don't get a critical okay, fail. D5. D5, okay, yes. Yeah, D5, yes. Okay, uh, three. Yeah, okay. We're getting some pretty average scores here. Okay. Now, look, um, this, as you might have seen in that code, is unauthenticated. So we just go directly to that uh, endpoint that won't be live as you're watching this video. But you can actually go beyond this and have this deployed with a little bit more security and um, a little bit more uh, capability. So what you can see here is we have a Lambda function which is being used as a custom authorizer on the API gateway. Definitely recommend doing that. And also you can have a DynamoDB table being used as a session store off the back of our MCP server. Instructions and code to do all of these things will be included in the description below if you wanna go ahead and create MCP servers with Lambda. Suman, thank you so much for taking us through this. Thank you. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a like if you enjoyed it. It helps other people to find videos just like this. Also, do consider subscribing to this channel and click that notification bell. That way, you'll be notified when any more videos are available on this subject. Don't forget to check back the other videos that we've been making on Strands Agents. Suman, thank you so much thank for recording these videos with us. And until the next time, See you later.